Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm Dunit from Event Driven Utopia. Today we are going to talk about the visibility timeout feature available in Amazon SQS. SQS is a highly available, durable and a hosted message queue service from Amazon. When creating a queue using the AWS console, you might have seen this field called the visibility timeout where you can give it a time duration between 0 seconds and 12 hours. In this video, I am going to talk about what does it mean by the visibility timeout, how it works, how to configure the visibility timeout and some best practices to follow. Let's start off with a simple example. Here, a producer sends a message to a consumer via a SQS queue. When the producer sends a message to SQS, it is stored in the queue until consumed by a consumer. When the consumer is ready, it polls SQS for new messages and ultimately receives the message. But there's an important thing to notice here. When a consumer receives a message, SQS doesn't really delete the message in the queue because SQS doesn't really know whether the message has been received by the consumer or not. For example, the message might get lost in transit or the consumer can fail while processing the message. So SQS must not lose the message under situations like that. Hence, it keeps the message in the queue until it is explicitly deleted by the consumer. Let's go back to our example. Now the consumer receives a message and starts processing it. The processing might take some time due to various reasons like uh, delays from upstream components, uh, network delays and so on. While the consumer is busy with the message, there's a chance for another consumer to receive the same message and process. This is possible because the message is not deleted from the queue yet. Then how does SQS prevent the same message being processed more than once? It is possible with the visibility timeout. Let's look at visibility timeout in detail. While the consumer is processing a message in the queue, SQS temporarily hides the message from other consumers. This is done by setting a visibility timeout on the message, a period of time during which SQS prevents other consumers from receiving and processing the message. The default visibility timeout for a message is 30 seconds. How visibility timeout works? It begins when SQS hands over a message to the consumer. During this time, the consumer has to do two things. First, it has to complete the processing of the message. Second, it must delete the message from the queue. If a message must be received only once, the consumer should delete it within the duration of the visibility timeout. Otherwise, it will be available for the another consumer. Let's try to understand with an example. A consumer polls SQS for new messages. SQS returns a message to the consumer and begins the visibility timeout for the return message. While the original consumer is processing the message, another consumer can compete for the same message in SQS. Since the visibility timeout is active on the message, SQS will not return the message to the new consumer. Once the original consumer is done with the processing, it deletes the message from the queue. Now let's look at a rainy day scenario. What if consumer fails before deleting the message? Then the visibility timeout will expire and the message becomes visible to other consumers for receiving. This allows another consumer to pick up the message if the first consumer fails without completing the processing. 
This will ensure that the message will be reliably processed at least once. Configuring the Visibility Timeout Every SQS queue has the default visibility timeout of 30 seconds. That means, consumer has exactly 30 seconds to process and delete a message. However, this value can take up to 12 hours. You can change this value for the entire queue or per message basis. Configuring for the entire queue. You can perform a series of load tests on the consumer and get a ballpark figure on how long will it take to process a message. If you know this value beforehand, you can set it while you are creating the queue. As you see before, you can use the AWS console to set the visibility timeout for all the messages in the queue. Unlike setting for the entire queue, you can configure the timeout per message basis. There can be situations where you don't know how long will it take to process a message. For example, when the consumer is in the middle of processing a message, it may need additional time to complete the processing. So the default visibility timeout set for the entire queue will be insufficient in that case. In a situation like that, SQS allows you to set a special visibility timeout for the received message without changing the overall queue timeout. The consumer can call the change message visibility operation of the SQS API with a new value to shorten or extend the visibility timeout for a message. Let's try to understand this with an example. This consumer is reading from a queue where the initial visibility timeout is set to 2 minutes. Then it asks for an extension of 20 seconds and SQS grants it. For the second time, consumer asks for an extension of 10 seconds and it is granted as well. Finally, consumer completes the processing and deletes the message. Likewise, you can specify an initial visibility timeout and then as long as you still work on the message, keep extending the timeout as necessary. Terminating the visibility timeout. When a consumer doesn't want to process and delete a message, it can tell the SQS to terminate the visibility timeout for that message immediately. The message will be immediately visible to other consumers in the system and available for processing. Now let's take a look at some best practices to follow when working with the visibility timeout. Setting the visibility timeout depends on how long it takes your consumer to process and delete a message. If you set it to a higher value, your consumer has to wait for a relatively long time to attempt to process the message again if the previous processing attempt fails. If you set to a low value, a duplicate message is received by another consumer while the original consumer is still working on the message. So it has to be a sweet spot between being too high and being too low. As a rule of thumb, set the timeout to the maximum value if you know that value beforehand. If you don't know this value beforehand, set the timeout to a baseline value and keep on extending it until your consumer is done with the message. Thanks for watching the video folks. We'll see you in another one.